Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the balance of Ninjago, what exactly it is, why we constantly hear about it, and why the ninja are continuously fighting for it season after season. Simply put, the balance is something that Ninjago needs in order to function properly, and I think it's only natural to start today's video with a quote from Sensei Garmadon. We underestimate the importance of balance. When it's there, we're at peace. When something is off, everything falls. Ninjago is no different. When one relies on something too much, we become weak, vulnerable, imbalanced. In order to find your full potential and unlock your true power, you must find your own balance. What Garmadon is saying here not only applies to the ninja and their training, it also applies to the entirety of Ninjago itself and its functionality, and is crucial for Ninjago's survival. The balance not only exists in Ninjago as a spiritual oasis, it also exists as a literal representation of balance, with its origins being traced back to the first realm and the first Spinjitsu master. As I'm sure you all know, the first Spinjitsu Master is a being of two halves, Dragon and Oni. Dragon representing the light and Oni, the darkness. That's just how it goes according to Ninjago lore, the dragons represent the good of the world, the Oni, the bad of the world. The realm of Oni and dragons was constantly fluctuating in terms of balance during the war between both sides, between the war of the Oni and the dragon. The first Spinjitsu Master, being a spawn of both sides, decided that the war was too much for him to handle, and as a result, he left the first realm and ventured on into a new world. Entering this new world, however, the balance was still just as chaotic, if not even worse. Conflict brewed in this mysterious new world as Wajira, an ancient storm spirit, battled the locals for dominance. However, the first Spinjitsu master helped to defeat her, setting peace between the light and the darkness for the first time in that realm. Finally, with the realm at balance, the first Spinjitsu master called this new world his home and dubbed it Ninjago, creating an entirely new landmass using himself as the blueprint, erasing the chaos that came before his arrival and allowing both sides to coexist free of conflict. And as a result, since Ninjago was created with literal balance in mind, the balance was there to stay. The balance itself, being, well, a balance of both evil and good. And with the first Spinjitsu Master being a being of great balance, he created Ninjago with the balance in mind, and created his own bloodline also involving the balance. Being a perfect 50-50 split of both Oni and Dragon, representing both sides of the balance, he passed that genetic makeup along to his two sons, Garmadon, who represented destruction, and Wu, who represented creation. While the first Spinjitsu Master represented the full balance, his sons only represented each half, and continued Continuing this trend, Ninjago itself as a landmass, like the first Spinjitsu Master, grew to become a physical metaphor for the balance itself, with Ninjago eventually being split down the middle and separated into two halves, one side representing the light and one side representing the darkness. And with that being said, two key locations across Ninjago also became representative of the balance itself, with the Temple of Light representing the light and the Oni Temple representing the darkness. These two temples manifested that both sides of power existed on a larger scale. And ironically, each of these temples existed on each half of Ninjago opposite to itself, with the Temple of Light being on the Dark Island and the Oni Temple being in Ninjago, showing that both good and evil, light and darkness, Oni and dragon, exist within each other. And just taking a look at this map, does that look familiar to anybody? Yep, exactly. Ninjago was created at balance thanks to the first Spinjitsu Master. Simply put, the balance is peace residing within Ninjago, as both sides of the balance have existed, continue to exist, and will exist exist in the future. The balance represents the peace between both sides, there will always be good and evil, but the chaos itself began to brew in the darkness, which of course led to the creation of the Overlord. The Overlord would grow to power whenever Ninjago would face conflict, and throughout the reign of the first Spinjitsu Master in Ninjago, conflict was prevalent. The Overlord is a being that feeds on darkness, and while he can be defeated and laid to rest, as we've seen many times throughout the Ninjago TV series, he can never be physically destroyed. He grows more powerful with each chaotic endeavor Ninjago faces, simply because the balance is shifting. The balance itself does not favor one side over the other, but instead it desires peace between both sides as we've previously established. The Overlord himself is one of, if not Ninjago's, most evil antagonists. He desires to destroy the balance, and he himself is the only one that honestly could. And taking a look at the Overlord's perspective, you can see why he desires to destroy the balance so much. In a way, the balance's sheer existence creates chaos, as the balance desires constant equal peace between both sides, but without peace, Ninjago falls. 
laws. However, without the balance, or if the balance is completely destroyed, an evil being such as the Overlord can have peace, but in the favor of darkness, which was what the Overlord's ultimate goal was during Ninjago Crystallized, to have peace in the dark. His goal was to maintain the balance by completely destroying all definition of the phrase in order to favor his dark, twisted vision. The balance itself was preventing the Overlord to becoming all-powerful, and as a result, the Overlord sought to destroy that balance that was holding him back. Without the balance, the Overlord could fully conquer Ninjago and not have to worry about the entire landmass crumbling around him, as there would not be a balance to appease if he overwhelmed the balance and destroyed it. With Ninjago completely shrouded in darkness, there would not be any light, and thus the balance would not exist. The only thing that could oppose the power of destruction is the power of creation, which the ninja have used multiple times to defeat the Overlord. But destruction cannot be fully destroyed. Instead, the balance has been restored time and time again, but the darkness will always remain, and as a result, the Overlord will always remain. You can put the Overlord to slumber, but he will always be there, growing more powerful with each passing conflict that the ninja face over their time of existing in Ninjago. Every single time we see the ninja fight a new villain, that is increasingly destroying the balance, and as a result, the overlord grows more and more powerful. The power of good and creation can never truly claim victory because the balance does not favor their side. Instead, Ninjago as a world requires a balance between the good and the evil. You can't have one without the other, and Ninjago will not have light without some darkness. According to Ninjago lore and the rules of the world, the Overlord is sure to arise again one day, especially if Ninjago continues to see conflict. And because several villains, both old and new, continuously threaten and attack Ninjago, the balance itself will continue to be threatened. So what exactly is the balance? Well, the balance is existence within itself, and when existence is threatened, the ninja will be there to protect it best they can. Of course, they are using the power of creation to defend the balance, but they can never truly claim victory. Because like I said, the entire land mass of Ninjago itself, the entire world that the ninja live in, does not desire or favor their side. Instead, Ninjago desires a balance. And with that being said, that's exactly what the balance is according to Ninjago lore. I know the series itself hardly explains what the balance is, and most of the time it's just something that Ninjago fans have to assume is what we're fighting for, but yes, every single time the ninja are fighting a new villain, they may be fighting for personal reasons, but when you look even deeper, they are fighting to simply keep the balance intact, because without the balance, Ninjago Ninjago cannot be. Remember, the balance itself requires balance, and even if the ninja wanted to shroud the entire world in light and creation, that in and of itself would destroy the balance, and as such, the ninja cannot achieve that. I hope you found today's video interesting, and I hope I was able to teach you guys a little bit more about the balance in Ninjago. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time, but I never really found the right way to go about it, and I hope you guys were able to enjoy today's video. I had a lot of fun making it, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, feel free to like and subscribe to that fun stuff and also feel free to leave a comment down below discussing what you think of the balance in Ninjago and when do you think we will see the overlord again in the future because statistically it's going to happen again one day it's just a matter of when that'll happen leave all your thoughts down below hopefully you enjoyed today's video and with that being said guys that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here thank you so much for watching if you guys enjoyed today's video feel free to like and subscribe do all that fun stuff and i will talk to you guys again very soon peace